Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, I'm Shinji Nakano from Kyoto University Center for Research. So today, uh, I firstly, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, my uh, former uh, project of the microcysis. For microcysis, the Hans has already introduced it that very toxic and dangerous uh, microorganisms. So I skipped the, the uh, what microcysis is. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, my project <laughs> consisted of the three, uh, three universities. One is Kyoto University, another is a, a Tsukuba University, final one is Fukui Prefecture University. And then my project was consisted of the three parts. The first part was lake research. We visit the main some lake and question the water sample and then make it some analysis. And the second part was experimental research. It's a, it's an ecophysiological uh, molecular ecological world. And the uh, first uh, lake research was conducted by the Kyoto University and Tsukuba University. And the experimental part uh, by the Kyoto University and the Fukui Prefecture University. And the final part was environmental sociology research. The, the, uh, the, this uh, project was funded, sponsored by the uh, Minister of Environment in Japan. And the Minister of Environment asked me to include some uh, environmental sociology to uh, think about the, uh, the relationship between the microsystems and the uh, human activities. So that's why the, the Kyoto University, my team, they uh, hired one uh, postdoc about the uh, uh, environmental sociology. And the final, our final goal was to reduce the risk of the microsystems as much as possible. But they, they, we have been, uh, we uh, conducted the main items of the microsystems research. So today I'd like to introduce you the, some of them. The, the yellow part, the, today I'd like to talk about. So first was, uh, first talk, a topic was, uh, is the disposal of microsystems by birds and human activities. But uh, today I'd like to focus on the, uh, the bird uh, transportation of microsystems. As you know, the, uh, not only the uh, human activities, but also the, the bird uh, transportation uh, can transport the uh, microcystis so all over the world. The, for example, the human activities, we want to have the, uh, some water resources from everywhere, and the, so we uh, develop the, some uh, canals or some other the, uh, the artificial rivers or streams. Uh, something like the, the uh, creeks uh, introduced by the, uh, the ants, but the purpose was different. And uh, but migrated birds also can transport the microcystis from lake to lake. So, uh, for example, the, the wild duck, the wild duck can migrate whole the earth like this. Uh, this was uh, this uh, information was uh, obtained from the internet. The, my, one of the pastors, she was a, a bird ecologist. And she uh, examined a bird duck migration like this. And uh, so uh, we kept the duck in our lab and uh, we forced the bird duck to drink microcystis culture. It is very hard for the bird duck, but we did that. And then we checked the, uh, the, the, uh, their pieces, fecal pellets. And whether the fecal plates uh, has the microcystis cells, and then we collected the fecal plates of mother to that, and then observed the fecal plates under the microscope. And sometimes we can observe, we could observe the uh, microcystis cell like this, and also we check the, uh, the under the epiprocess microscope to uh, to confirm uh, to examine the, whether the microcystis cells uh, was uh, alive or not. And sometimes we, can, we could find a, a, a live microcyst cells. And then we also check the, uh, the microcyst gene using uh, some molecular techniques uh, to, 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 to find uh, some uh, microcyst uh, genes uh, within uh, our fecal pellets. And this is uh, one of the results. The, the horizontal axis means the uh, retention time in the blood duct's gut and uh, from the zero to the uh, hours. And uh, this is the bottom axis shows the uh, uh, micros percentage of living microcyst cells in a fecal pellets of the duck. As we can see here, the, after the zero time is the, uh, we force to the, the, uh, the mother duck to drink the uh, microcyst cultures here. And after four hours, the four hours still, the ten, about the 10% of the microcyst cells still alive in the uh, mother duck fecal pellets. 
And that was also the case in the after 10 hours or something. So the average flying, flying speed of the Marada dam is about 70 kilometers per hour. So four hours means that the Marada dam can fly about 300 kilos. 300 kilos is very long. So the Marada dam uh, who can uh, who ingested the microcyst cells can uh, uh, transport microcysts from the Kyushu Island in Japan to the Korea, or from Korea to the Kyushu Island. It's possible. So the uh, four hours is long for the uh, for us to the uh, to prevent from the microcysts transportation. So second, the topic is phylogenetic distribution of microcysts in Asian countries. So due to the uh, the transportation of microcysts through the human activities or the marine birds. So we have the uh, some uh, geological uh, distribution of the microcystis uh, species and the genotypes. And this is a result by the uh, scuba team. And they uh, collected the uh, microcystis samples from the many uh, Asian countries, also within the, some lakes from Japan. And they uh, examined the uh, genotype of the microcystis. We are focusing on only on microcystis erinosa, but microcystis erinosa consists of the uh, many genotypes. And uh, they use the uh, MLST method, but uh, we, I skip the uh, how the method is. And uh, as we can see, the scuba team uh, could uh, categorize them from A to A to something, the genotype of microcystis. And uh, they expected, uh, they uh, thought that their hypothesis was that that there would be a, some uh, special microcyst genotype which distribute only in the, for example, Laos, only in the Myanmar or something like that. But that was not the case. So every microcyst genotype distributed so many countries and also in Japan. So the uh, microcyst has already been transported to everywhere through the human activities and the birds. So that we have the, every seeds of the microcystis genotypes all over the world. And then the Tsukuba team also uh, examined the uh, venue lakes in Japan, the same method. And they find the very uh, exceptional case that in 1990, uh, so, so sorry, 2009 or 2010, G type of the microcystis distributed only in the Kanto area of Japan. So this was exceptional. So sometimes we have the uh, limited microcystis evidence genotype distributed in the very limited area. This was also the case for the Lake Shinji. This is the brackish water. In the brackish water, we have the a very special microcystis genotype. It's a SJ type. It's a, uh, this microcystis has the tolerance for the uh, brackish uh, environment. And the we Kyodiva's team also uh, collected the water sample from the, the Kansai and the Shikoku Kyushu area uh, reservoir the ponds to uh, examine the microcystis genotype. But again, we cannot find any tendency for the uh, geological distribution. So the as a conclusion, the we have already the uh, the distributes, we have already the wide distribution of the various uh, genotype of the microcystis, not only in Japan, but also in the Asia and uh, maybe all over the world. So let's move on to the, uh, let me uh, talk about the next item, the growth of the microcystis with special reference to the nutrient supplies. In the house talk, the house uh, emphasized that the uh, not only phosphorus, but also nitrogen is very important for the microcystis dominance. And to reduce the microcystis bloom, we have to reduce the not only phosphorus, but also the nitrogen very much. And uh, so uh, to uh, examine the uh, nutrient supply effect on the microcystis growth, we artificially uh, brought the microcystis bloom in the, uh, the artificial pond in my institution. So we put the nutrients over and over again every one week or something. And finally, we get the artificial microcystis roots like this in the outside artificial pond. And then we change the uh, supply of the nitrogen and phosphorus ratio to the, the each pond. And uh, when we uh, put the uh, nitrogen and phosphorus in a very low 
solely low yes LP ratio here, so we could not so a uh, massive growth of the microsystem like this. But we when we apply the supply to the uh, high LP ratio of nutrients to the sum of the pounds, we have a uh, uh, the massive growth of the microsystem like this. So uh, the Hans was being correct because the nitrogen is very important for the microsystem growth in the up shell outside of home. And then uh, this uh, research, experimental research was conducted by the Fuki Prefecture University, Professor Kondo, and uh, they uh, purchased the uh, summer microsystem uh, strains from the NIS, the National Institution of Environmental Sciences. And uh, they, they examined the uh, growth of the microsystem under the various nitrogen concentration like this. And the, the blue line shows the microcystis bilibis. The other strains were microcystis erinosa. As we can see here, the blue line lower than the red line. This means that microcystis bilibis was less competitive for the nitrogen compared with the microcystis erinosa. Uh, maybe some of, you, some of you not know that the, the microcystis bilibis is maybe highly toxic that the microsystem erginosa. And then we also check the examine the uh, phosphorus, various phosphorus availability for the uh, growth rate of the uh, those microsystem strains. And uh, finally we can find that those two are uh, same results. But uh, we I enlarged this one for this uh, low concentration part like this. So we, as we can see here the and the high concentration of phosphorus, the blue line lower than the red line. This means, again, the microcystis bilis, highly toxic one, is less competitive with the uh, erginosa. This is also the case for the low concentration of phosphorus. So uh, the blue line lower than the red line. This means the bilis is a weaker competitor to the erginosa for the phosphorus. So we uh, concluded that the microcystis species is less competitive than other microcystis species, than this may be uh, albinosa, in terms of response to nutrient supply. Okay, let me uh, move to the uh, uh, other topic. The, the, we conducted some, for the better management of microcystis blooms, we conducted the three items of the uh, microcystis, and uh, so today I'd like to talk about early detection of microcystis blooms. This is related to the uh, microcystis blooming forecast. And uh, I myself is a broad ecologist, that I'm very much interested in the grades of microcystis. And then uh, um, uh, the, I, I have got the we have got the uh, results that the, some protozoan species could graze on microcystis uh, about 25%, only one per day. But uh, today I skipped that result and then I would like to talk about early detection of the microcystis. This is a simplified figure of the uh, photosynthesis of the, uh, the phytoplankton. When the phytoplankton receive their light, uh, this is something like a side uh, the system, and then the electron would transport from the PS2, the photosystem 2 to photosystem 1 like this. And some part of the energy could be released as a fluorescence. But when we apply the DCMU, it's a photosynthesis inhibitor, the, uh, the, the transposition of electron here would be uh, blocked. And all the energy uh, is released as a fluorescence. So we used this system. And uh, if we use the uh, 590 nanometer of light, which is uh, uh, the the, this light of the wavelength of light is absorbed by the uh, sand bacteria uh, uh, picocyanin, sand bacteria pigment. And if we use this light wavelength of light, then we can measure the uh, fluorescent intensity of sand bacteria. So uh, uh, this is fluorescent can be used for the potential of phyt uh, phot uh, photosynthesis activity. So that if this fluorescence is very weak, the photosynthetic activity of phytoplankton is also weak. If this fluorescence is very strong, the photosynthetic activity of the phytoplankton is very strong or high. So uh, if we use this light, 
the, we can measure the cyanobacterial photosynthetic potential. So we applied this uh, method to the uh, outside uh, microsystems room in the, uh, at the, our institution, and then we can find this uh, uh, result. And then as we can see here, this is the time, and then we have a microsystems room here, followed by the Arpanizomenon uh, Isachenkoi group here. And then please take a look at the uh, 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 green diamond, and then we can hear when we have the microsystems room here, the it's not so easy, but we have an increase in the uh, diamonds. And when we may have the uh, decrease of the microcystis, we have a decrease of the uh, uh, diamond. And then we have the asanizomenon broom, we have the, again the, uh, the diamond increase. So that we thought that the, we could apply, we would apply this method to have the uh, early warning of the microcystis broom in the, the, the eutrophic label resonance. Now, the, this uh, work was already, already uh, published in the Journal of Plant Research, and now the Japanese Ministry of the uh, Land and Traffic people are interested in the, this method, and they have been conducting the many experiments to make feasible this uh, method to have the early warning of the microcystis group in the dam reservoir, because many dam reservoirs in Japan is managed by the uh, Ministry of Land and Traffic. So, uh, so this is the uh, brief uh, explanation of what we uh, add, the new information for the microcystis research within our project. And uh, I would like to skip this one. And uh, yeah, using this uh, slide, I'd like to emphasize that the sharing the information is very important to avoid the risk of the microcystis. The Australian case is uh, maybe the best. The information about the microcystis blooming is shared by the, not only the researchers and the uh, administration, but also for the ordinary people. This is a very good uh, system. But in Japan, maybe in Korea, still not so enough. The, the information about microcystis is shared only by the uh, government and the researchers. And ordinary people do not, not so familiar with the microcystis. And Vietnam, Kenya, unfortunately, not so enough, sorry. I have ever visited the Lake Victoria three times, but the Kenyan people do not have, do not have the enough information about the microcystis. So, uh, uh, the my uh, mixture environment uh, project has already over, but we have been conducting another microcystis research from the uh, 2012 to 2015 together with the Chinese friends, and uh, this study is mainly focusing on their my. Uh, or the sort of organic matter loading. And, uh, but the, in Lake Typhoon, as you, uh, you have already known that the Lake Typhoon has a microcystis root, so we have been researching on the uh, the sort of organic matter uh, production through the microcystis. And one of the, uh, my collaborator, Dr. Hunter, is here, and uh, we have another uh, two more uh, Chinese friends. And then I, we have been trying to get the another grant from the uh, JSD to make uh, to conduct more research about the uh, cyan bacteria in Japan and China like this, but this is still under review. I'm not sure whether we we get success or not. Thank you very much for your uh, kind attention. Sorry, my very quick talking because time is limited. Thank you very much.